25% increase everywhere. Every basic ability, skill and talent can be developed through hard work, good strategies, persistence, dedication and input from others. Where focus goes, energy flows. So focus your energy on continuous learning and stop wasting time thinking about looking smart. Build resistance, build vulnerability, build courageousness and face adversity with a smile. Become comfortable with uncomfortable. You know, the only person that you need to prove anything to is you. Imperfect action trumps perfect inaction. Stop wasting time and get on with it. Failure is part of learning, so start learning by taking action. Christian Lavolsi, welcome to the hot seat. Now, you've got to love a live broadcast, right? You just never really know what's going to happen. <laughs> Not at all. That was just insane. I was just like, didn't even go, didn't do what it normally does. So, but we're here now. <laughs> we are here. Welcome. It is Wednesday. We are back for the hot seat, 5 p.m. Sydney time. We are excited to be bringing some value to our audience, to our followers, and we're continuing on the theme this week of productivity, uh, something we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. And, you know, there's so many different angles to this. So we're going to continue on with that conversation today. And let's get straight into it with my first question for you today, Christian. I really wanted to ask you, now this is something we've been diving into as a team, as our leadership team, all the way down uh, into our granular levels of our um, employees, our talent, whatever you like to call them. Uh, I'd love to know from you, what are some of the tools that you really recommend for having a productive day every day? I know you're massive on your Google calendar. That is a huge thing for you. But what are some of the other hacks, tips, tools that you use to be super efficient every single day? Well, one. Live with purpose. Know your purpose. Uh, you know, everyone thinks that, you know, the productivity hacks are like some magic bullet. No. Mm -hmm. It's successful people do the things that unsuccessful people choose not to do. Mm -hmm. And most unsuccessful people do all the simple things because they're always looking for this magic bullet, Simone. So the first thing is know your why. When you have purpose... You create outcomes, okay? Uh, have smart goals and read them every morning and every night. Your goals should be enshrined in everyday practice. So many people write goals at the beginning of the year after they've, you know, been out on the gas, they're tanked, and they say, I'm going to lose 100 kilos. <laughs> they do well for three days and then, and why? Because they never wrote it down. The statistics are pretty bad. 10% of people that actually have goals uh, actually follow through and only 3% actually achieve them. So mm. no wonder why uh, the top 3% of the world are the successful people. Right? Yeah. So, and, and don't quote me on those stats, but that, that's kind of where they are. It's pretty yeah. disappointing. The other one is you've got to develop discipline. right? Mm. You, know, you see all these people that go to the gym and they're grossly unsuccessful. Do you know why? They've developed this discipline to go to the gym because they have to look and feel great and tell the world how great they are, right? Mm. But then you're unsuccessful in other parts of your life. You've got to develop the disciplines that keep you in alignment. You know, like I, I was reflecting today on the disciplines that I used to keep when I used to go to the gym. Yeah. And, you know, benching 265 pound, uh, 265 kilos, there is a video on YouTube of, uh, of uh, me doing that. So it's, it, it can be validated, you know. And, um, you know, I used to warm up on 180 kilos. You don't mm. get to lift that level of weight unless you're training and you've got disciplines. And then I met Lucy and I put on 70 kilos and the rest is history. I never lost the baby fat, right? So uh, that's kind of how I use it. Um, my wife, on the other hand, is far more disciplined than me in that area. That's the area that I lack discipline because I apply my craft elsewhere, right? 
but it's yeah. you know it's likely going to damage me in the long run. So I've got to fix that. Um, mm. you know, this is me being honest. But the big one is use your bloody calendar. Yeah, everyone's got a calendar. Back in the day, it used to be called a diary, right? And the diary, <laughs> the diary was like a book, and used to yeah. write shit in it. And you know, people then have gone, "Oh my god, I can't write anymore." So keep a fucking diary. You know, there goes the G rating. But the, the point is, it pisses me off. You know, I, I teach diary blocking, like a religion, and time tracking. You know, mm. use use the Pomodoro method. There's even a free Pomodoro timer. Right, and you hit it. You start an activity and you focus on it for twenty minutes. That's all you've got to do, Simone. Is focus for twenty minutes at yeah. a time. You mm-hmm. know that most people can't concentrate for more than five minutes. I watch people in meetings, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, I'm sorry that we're so boring for you. Maybe you started listening, you'd actually perform better, right? Mm. So the other skill to be more productive is listen. When someone is speaking and it's your superior, your boss, um, or, or anyone for that matter, pay attention. Yeah. You'd be surprised what you actually start to hear and what you should be able to do. Um, the other one that pisses me off more than anything is <laughs> put your phone on silent and turn off every single notification. Mm. Uh, have you ever heard my phone ring in a year, 12 months, even working with the team? No, actually. It doesn't. It's on permanent silent. Yeah. They're, they're, you know, only certain members in my favorites can call me mm-hmm. and my phone will go off. Use technology to be more productive. Make technology an enabler, not a disabler. Yeah. So we talked um, last week about the distractions. Yeah. And that's what it for is. For every distraction, it takes seven minutes for someone to get back into the zone. So if you get distracted by notification every seven minutes... You're never in the zone, right? Yeah. Listen to the crowd. Um, and, and the last one, Simone, um, is you've got to learn to say no 20 times more than you say yes. Yeah, that's a big one, right? I've heard yeah. you say this before as well. Yeah. And, and there's no wonder that my clients, our clients, are hugely successful because they listen to this. You know, they practice the basics like a religion. A lot of them practiced it before they even came to me. I just enhance the strategy, right? Yeah. And and drive the thinking that they can't do because they don't have a helicopter view 24 hours a day like I do. You know, mm. I've got the coolest job in the world. I say it every week. I get to fly in a helicopter almost 24 hours a day, whether it's in my businesses or whether it's in the businesses of our clients. Yeah. And that's what that's that that that's why I've I am who I am. It's not because of some innate talent or gift that i was born with it's Mm. it's it's a byproduct of the circumstance that i've created for myself through the decisions that i have made and that's about five minutes so i apologize yes i did go off but that was very valid points so okay let's move on to our second question and you kind of touched on this when you talked about your purpose and why before but how much of an importance does your mindset play into your performance oh you're trying everything you're desperately trying to piss me off, eh? Um, like, if, you know, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, listen up. <laughs> mindset is everything, right? Mm. You know, mindsets, right, plural, helps you simplify things, mm. right? You know, these belief systems, these mindsets, they help us set expectations, they help us plan for the worst and guide decisions based on the assumptions that we make. You know, understanding the difference between a fixed mindset and a growth mindset is just the start of a more fulfilling life, right? Mm. Um, you know, cultivating a growth mindset, Simone, will actually help you turn failure or even fear into fuel, right? So that you can take courageous actions, but also make better decisions for yourself and your workplace and your peers and your family moving forward, right? And a strong mindset means more awareness, more awareness of self and others and as well as an increase in in, in emotional intelligence, Mm. right? Um, But what's also really important, and and I'll give you a, a really simple example in a moment, a mindset essentially is just 
a series of self perceptions or beliefs that people hold about themselves. Okay. Mm. It's always themselves. A mindset is internalized, right? And these determine our behavior, our outlook, and all of the mental attitudes that we have. And so, for example, mm. it's believing that you're either intelligent or unintelligent. Now, imagine if we started with that. You know, I was brought up in a house where I got beaten to a pole. With a pole, actually, and <laughs> rubber hoses. Mm. Now, I grew up in a very violent environment, and I got taught that I was stupid because I was constantly told that I was stupid, that I was mm. an idiot, that I couldn't do anything. And so I turned all that fear and internalized it by developing a fixed mindset that I was stupid. Mm. And the moment I got out of that situation and I grew up and learned about uh, the mindsets that you need to have, and I developed a winning mindset, a competitive mindset, a strong mindset by playing sport. You know, and when I knew that I, you know, and I wasn't the fittest, the fastest, I wasn't, I just bloody believed it and I worked hard and I visualized performance, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, my coaches would always say to me, you win us the game in the last five minutes. How are you not dead? Yeah. And I'm like, it's just that extra 2% that I come up with. It's how I started lifting at the age of 35, 265 kilograms, mm. right? Because it's a mindset. Right? It's why I built 80 businesses right? over, the, over my short lifetime. Okay? Yeah. It's why I want to build another 100. Mm. Right? But I realized that building another 100 is just stupid and risky. So I'm better off helping other people build their businesses into successful businesses. Right? Yeah. And why? Because I learned my skill set. I'm not an executioner. Right? I'm actually a strategist. I strategize, I develop it, and then I put better people in to execute and take action. Mm. Right? But a mindset, right, is the difference between success and failure. You know, um, and, 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 and I guess to, to let people go, oh, that's easy well for you to say that. Say, so, no, 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 I have evidence. I can show you report cards, right, up until year 12 where I got worse than an F and self-discipline required, self-belief required. Like these are the things that people wrote. My mm. teachers, they believed in me. I didn't believe in myself. Yeah, Simone, and it didn't. It wasn't until after I built successful businesses, failed miserably, came back and bounced back, that I realized I was smart. And I went back mm -hmm. to uni. I went to uni, graduated with an MBA, and got golden keys. You don't yeah. get golden keys if you're not smart. You yeah. don't get golden keys because it's the top fifteen or twelve percent, whatever it is, of world academics. Yeah, you know, I became an adjunct professor technically best in the field. I became the inaugural entrepreneur and resident of a Sandstone University. Mm. I wasn't stupid, but I grew up in an environment that told me I was stupid, developed a fixed mindset and was never allowed to develop this other growth mindset. And mm. I guess that now teaches me to teach my children differently Yeah. by encouraging, not diminishing. Mm. So the attitude is, and the mindset that you need in life, forget work, in life, you know, I hate negative people. I run. Yeah. I walk into a room and I feel your energy. I bolt. And people go, <laughs> mate, what's wrong with Christian? Like, I'm going near you. Yeah. Right? Mm. You know, and people always say, often say to me, Christian, you hang around with some real dickheads. And mm. I'm like, uh, no. They are really positive people who are actually going out and achieving shit, but they're also super smart. So you don't relate to them because you're not that bright. Mm. And people look at me and they're like, what? That's the truth. You don't want to hear the truth? The truth hurts. Yeah. Right? Stop judging people. Embrace mm. people for who they are and what they stand for. But look beyond that. Go below the iceberg. Yeah. Right. The iceberg is much bigger, bigger underneath than it is above. Mm. Right. Go so deeper. I have one question of this. This isn't my third question, but I want to ask, what is your take on the saying, fake it till you make it? Is that part of having a growth mindset? Is that telling yourself that you are there or that you want that? No, you Simone, Simone, I, 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 I developed the fake it till you make it shit, right? And you know mm. what that is? That just engrosses your imposter syndrome. It just mm. exacerbates it, right? And then you end up growing up in survival mode like I did. 
and you know you're you're just exaggerating shit over and over again and it's taken me years to break that vicious cycle years so of it to make it is not having a group no mind. absolutely not fake it till you make it is just bullshit right mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, what you need to do is really internalize, know who you are, become a master at something and share it with the world. Mm. I mean, you know, it's no secret. I have made some absolutely outlandish statements in my previous life. I haven't made any in five years. <laughs> I think the last time I made one was in 2017 <laughs> and it cost me dearly, right? Yeah. And that's the way life serves you. For me, mm -hmm. it was, hey, Christian, you're too good to be saying stupid shit. Stop saying mm -hmm. it. And I had to learn one final lesson. And from there, I'm 20 x to where I was. You know, when people thought I was defeated, I rose mm -hmm. from the ashes, a brand new person, and I'm truly happy to be who I am. I don't have yeah. to, you know, and I keep saying to myself, every time then that lie that comes into your head and says, you need to be more. And it's like, no, you are enough. Yeah. Right? Like, do you know what I mean? And, and and I say this to people all the time. And I think this was what makes me a really good advisor. And I love being a chairman of companies, right? Like it, it, it it's one of the, because, you know, I'm now 45 and I have the wisdom of an 80 year old is what my clients say to me. Mm. Right. And, and I'm blessed to, to have that. And, you know, and I encourage anyone who doesn't believe that to come and just talk to me. If you can get five minutes with me. Right. Yeah. But the, the reality of it is it's because I have lived every single thing that I've been through and mm. I don't want other people to go through it. And that's why even on this broadcast, we're so open and honest because yeah. I have nothing to hide. Mm. And and everything that you know has ever been said has been said. Right. Yeah. And so the answer there is that you've got to be true to you and you've got to know what you stand for and you, what you live for. And yeah, you know, I'm I'm not even sure that this is what you wanted to talk about, but but the reality <laughs> of it is, um, you know, this is what life's really about. Mm. You know, life is very short. Mm. You know, in hindsight, I remember being 20, bleaching my then hair blonde. Um, <laughs> you know, being put in you know the Attitude magazine as a mm -hmm. hair model. <laughs> Apparently, had a very pretty face. Um, shame for the head, but, um, but you know, when I had hair and, you know, I look back and I think I couldn't wait to grow up and that's because I was escaping from the truth. And the truth was we all have the opportunity to be great. It's the mindset. It's the mindset yeah. that we need. Mm -hmm. I really need to finish our live that's with so purpose program. Don't I? We do. Funny, every, yeah. every time, every time I say this, I know I get private messages. I've had two messages already privately saying, when's that program that you talk about all the time? And I'm like, shit, um, I've got to do it. And I know it's going to change the world. You know, um, you know, the closest thing to that is, you know, going to a four day Tony Robbins event. And, you know, even then that's a, you know, UPW is a amazing program that, that, you know, kind of leads you into buying other programs. Whereas I want to create a program that truly gives you what um, Simon Sinek, you know, wrote in a book of 180 pages that he wrote in one page, uh, really, yeah. you know. Um, but, oh, but it's really mm -hmm. important. It's really important to live your purpose. It's really important to find it. And it's bloody hard to find it, right? Yeah. There's no secret. It's really hard to find it. Um, yeah. But, you know, I took you through the process and, you know, mm. four or five months later, you found it, you know, because, yep. you know, and, uh, and you know, yeah, it, it cool. took time. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it did. It did. All right. I have one more question for you today. And I wanted to ask you, what should you do if you're really not feeling passionate or purposeful within your business? Now, this is something I see you experience with a lot of your new clients that come on. They're just so worn out. They've been running in the hamster wheel for so long and they've really lost, lost the passion and purpose for your business. What do you do when you get to that point? Like, how, how do you move forward or, or, Move on. Um, caveat, yeah. those clients that come to us are actually very successful though and have just mm -hmm. had enough. And the reason why they've had enough or lost their passion and purpose is they've lost direction, right? Yeah. Uh, most of them have been incredibly successful on their own well mm -hmm. before they met me. And what they're drawn to is the fact that I have purpose and they don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's a really simple one. If you're one of those people that doesn't have purpose 
uh, then you're going to be attracted to someone like me who is purpose driven because mm -hmm. you want that. Everyone wants to know why they're actually on earth. Well, I can't answer yeah. that question, right? But I can answer my question why I'm here, right? Mm -hmm. And that is to create freedom for people, right? Uh, to help them live their best life by, you know, helping them in their businesses and in their life. You know, the best compliment that I get from our clients is that I've saved their marriage. Mm -hmm. Yet I'm there growing their company 23, 24% year on year. Yeah. Right. Um, but that's what I get a real kick out of. But if you're one of those people that's not feeling passionate or purposeful in your business, then you've got to seek out help. No matter where you are. I mean, if you're if you're if you're you're lost your purpose and passion because your business is shit and you're going broke, then quit. Right? Like seriously, like you know, we recently helped a client um, who just could not find their way. And I mm. just said, shut it. Pack it up. And they're like, but I'm going to lose all this. I said, no, you're not. This is what you're going to lose if you continue. And I, within, yeah. it took me like half an hour. I mapped out what they would lose over the next six months if they didn't get out. Mm. And their passion and purpose was diminished significantly because of the financial situation that they had put themselves in because they didn't do the work when I told them to do the work. <laughs> right? Yeah. So now all of a sudden that they're out of this situation, their passion and purpose is coming back very, very fast. And they're very talented and brilliant at what they do. And already, yep, bang, I've got this. Great. Plan it. Think about it. Let's learn. And they have. They've learned from that experience. Don't go out and you know, hire bricks and mortar businesses that's going to cost you 100 grand a year. Find an alternative solution. We've got a smarter business model. We're paying 10 or 15 grand for a space. Like it's, it's changed the dynamic of the whole business. But it's about mm. changing the mindset, Simone. All right? Yeah. So the first thing I would actually do if I was in your situation, I'm going to give your, the listeners a real golden nugget. If you're one of those people that's just quite not feeling the passion and the purpose, ask yourself why. Mm. Just start there. Ask yourself why. Why am I not feeling the passion? Right? And forget if it's work. What about if it's your marriage? You know, why am I not passionate or purposeful about the person I'm spending my life with? You're going to be really surprised how quickly you can find the answers. And most of the time, it's you, right? Most of the time, it's you. You know, when I when I have a disagreement with my wife, and it's very rare, like we've had three in 10 years, right? It's funny how I am always this, the person that goes away and says, why am I fighting with her? What, what's mm. this? And when I internalize it, most of the time, it's the three times it's been her fault. But I turn it back onto me. No, I know she's probably going to watch this at some point. So, no. The, the truth is, you've got to internalize. You've got to say, okay, what? Why? Why? So it's, this applies to any situation, ladies and gentlemen. Right? Ladies and gentlemen, we have got to understand this. Everybody has to understand this. Okay? And, you know, the key is ask yourself why. I was actually looking for the drum roll. I couldn't find the drum roll. It's gone. Right? Um, but the, the, I was going to say drum roll, and then it just, I was like, can't find the button. But the, uh, but the point I'm making is, First, start with ask yourself why. Seek help. So everyone's intelligent enough to ask themselves why. Yeah. Then seek out help. All right? Now, if it's you know, if it's the first point of call for help, if you're not feeling passionate or purposeful, go see a psychologist first. I mean, they're in high demand. If you can get in one, it might take you two months. So you might be better off actually calling me, right? <laughs> well, actually, no, I'm about three months. Right? Maybe Karim. Maybe Karim Bokta from the Bokta Method, right? Um, but, the, but the reality of it is, um, you know, and Karim's a client, uh, and a friend, but, uh, but the thing is at the end of it, they're the three decisions. Ask yourself why, seek out help, take action or quit. And there is no yeah. shame in quitting. There is no shame. Uh, listen to me and listen very carefully. This bullshit notion of never giving up is another mm -hmm. bullshit fixed mindset, right? Okay. You, you, there are times where you've got to quit. If it's for your mental health, if it's for the well-being of your family and others, I see so many people in business doing shit because they thought they had this wonderful idea that was going to change the world, but it didn't even solve the most basic problem. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, you want to win in life, you've got to solve a world problem. Mm. No? A world problem. If you want to be a unicorn like Canva, like Culture App, 
you got to solve massive problems that other people can't solve. Yeah. Right? Most of your ideas, I'm sorry to tell you, including my own, are shit. <laughs> no. Because an yeah. idea, an, an idea <laughs> is like an arsehole. Everyone's got one. Yeah. Right? So you've got to then put energy and purpose. And if you don't have purpose when you start something and you don't have the meaning, right, you're never going to create the wealth that it needs to be able to flourish. Mm. You know, um, uh, some of these truths are going to hurt a lot of our you know, people that are listening. And I'm yeah. sorry, but I have a no bullshit approach. So if you're offended, you can, you know, go, well, go, go, go in the, <laughs> wherever. But the, the reality of it is I'm not here to make friends. I've, mm. I, and I say this to people, I have enough friends and they already struggle to see me. Right. Um, you know, I've got a wine cellar that's getting way too big. I've got a cigar collection that's not getting smoked. I've got, you know, the, the reality of it is I, I really want to just help people. I want to I want to be able to give people the hard truth about what it takes. And it's not hard work. That's another bullshit misconception. Mm. It's the right mindset. Okay? You know, I think we had this conversation in one of our meetings last week, right? You got to have the right mindset, and you got. And please don't get offended too easily, right? I get offended all the time. I mean, my daughter called me fat this morning, <laughs> and I looked at it and I said, "Honey, you are so right." I, and I said, "If you eat as, if you continue to eat as much as I do, you'll get fat too." And she was like, "Huh?" I'm like, "Well, you know, if you get yeah." And Lucy's like, "You can't say that." I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't say she's fat. I said, if you eat like I do, you'll get fat too. Um, you know, I just bypassed the fact that I don't have insulin intolerance and all the other shit. But, you know, the, the the abuse over the years and, you know, a shit gene pool, if you can say that in terms of how I process food. If there's a famine, the doctor reckons that I'll outlive 90% of people. <laughs> I don't wish there's a famine. I really yes. don't. Right? Because um, my son would die really quickly. He's like the twig. Um, you know, fastest metabolism on a planet, uh, and he's bred all day. But, um, but you know, the, the reality of it is, it's the mindset you have. Like, you know, you got to live life full out. Mm. You know, I, I, you know, I just don't understand people that sleep. I know you need it, but you know, why? And it's a mindset, you know. Um, I, I know there's no scientific evidence to what I'm going to say next, but I, I truthfully believe that, you know, I've been. You know, I mean, I literally have been fighting illness for months, right? You know this, like, you know, and everyone yeah. around me gets sick. And yet I just keep saying to myself, I can't afford to get sick. I can't afford to get sick. I can't afford to get sick. I can't. Afford... And all of a sudden, it's just like, you know, I just don't, I, I miss it. And I keep saying, you know, hopefully I'm not jinxing myself and I'm going to get even sicker. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, it's a mindset. Like, you know, I, I just don't have the luxury. Mm. And so you, you, you know, and I, I, as I said, there might be some bullshit in that, but, mm. but the reality of it is I started to believe it because it's like, you know, everyone around me, Lucy's got really bad flu and I'm just like, no, I, I've got to keep going. I've got to keep going. Like, it's just, just the way it is. You know, and some people out there would say that that's, you know, you're driving yourself to burnout. Yeah. I don't need a lecture in that. Been there. Right. Um, I've written a book on it. Right. So um, it's, it's, it's really important that people understand everyone has their own threshold. That's probably mm. the caveat I need to put, but a threshold is there to be stretched. How yeah. athletes, how you know, the four minute mile is a prime example. Yeah. Bannister was told, Bannister, I think it was Bannister, was told no one could break it. And then when he broke it, shitloads of people broke it afterwards because the mindset, yeah. the fixed mindset that it couldn't be broken. Right, mm. athletes out of there understand that. You know, I was a you know I've been a big um, I've been a member of the quarter club for a long time. You know that raises money for the Olympic Games, and you know for our athletes. And I love meeting those athletes at the events because you know Anna Mears she blows my mind every time I hear her speak. Right mm. in terms of her mindset, and even now that she's retired, you know, and has a family, it's like bang, 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 and all you know, charmers. When I met charmers five years ago that kid apart from the fact he's super tall and super fit i wonder why he keeps breaking records you know it's it's a mindset you just talk to him and instantly he believes you know um so simone i hope that 
in, in a very long week. I mean, you've been very quiet for 30 minutes. <laughs> uh, you haven't tried I, to cut I, me off. Are you, are you having one of your, oh, my God, I love this moment? I am. I am really enjoying this. I think there's so much to reflect on within this topic. And I think about my business and I think about my career and what's happened in those stages and, and where you sit in that fixed mindset or, you know, all of those different scenarios. So I think there's so much to take away from this hot seat episode that it's great just to, you know, I get in awe of, of seeing you live your passion and purpose as well and share that because it, it is infectious. It is something that you're just like, oh, I want that too. How do I create that for myself? So I mean, it's look, always a pleasure. To I really to. love that because uh, thank you for saying that because I do. Uh, today I was with a client where we're making some structural changes. I'm chairman of their board, uh, quite a large engineering firm. And um, we were writing copy for the PR. And she looked at me, she's like, you are getting like your excitement level. <laughs> and, and I said, it's great. And, and, and she knows me so well. And, and, and hers too. And we just started jamming on how we would write it. We, and then the beauty, I had to go because I had a call to the US and um, and right in the middle of it because we just spent a whole hour chunking this out. And then I messaged back, going, what do you think of this? About like half an hour. I had to stop. The energy was gone. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean you had to stop? I'm like trying to get back to it right now. And I'm like, oh crap, now I'm going to get back to it later. But it, it's so true when you... When you have purpose, you can create magic, right? Mm. And magic isn't money, ladies and gentlemen. Like people get so lost in this world of, of wealth. Um, you know, you see all these people, like, you know, I've got so many people I know who compare the car they drove 10 years ago. You know, they may have drove, driven a 355 Spider convertible Ferrari back then. And now they're <laughs> driving a brand new 45, you know, 488 Pista. And, and they've done very well for themselves. And I'm super, super proud of what these guys have done. But I look back, and and, and the reality is none of them have ever lost anything, mm. right? And, you know, I've gone off and I've lost money. Um, and from that day on, I realized I don't need any of that shit. Yeah. You know, and what I need is I need my children to know I love them. My mm. wife to know I love them. Uh, I need my dog to stop following me everywhere, right? No, no, he's he's just pure love. But you know, yeah, yeah. I, I I want my people to know that they come first. You know, mm -hmm. even though I'm a complete ruthless asshole sometimes, as <laughs> right, um, it's only because I care so much about creating freedom for everyone. And you know, unfortunately, my hardest battle is that I want everyone to have my mindset, and that can't happen. So I've got to mm. check myself and realize that people are going to have competing priorities and they're not going to be aligned with everything I want. So then I've got to, as a leader, mobilize those people. And that's super frustrating. And I know there's people still listening and they're thinking, ah, another moment, another episode, another day. Because <laughs> I've got to be on a call with a client you, in you, one you. minute. And oh. I also have to try and race home to cook dinner um, and go the Matildas. Go that girls is... tonight. I have not missed a single game. And I used to watch the girls beforehand. But last week's game, oh my goodness. Right? So everyone in Australia should be watching that tonight. And yeah, I, mean, uh, look, I just want to shout you out in the comments for saying that it's such a rare occasion that I am being quiet. So um, yes, I'm glad that there were so many gold nuggets for you to take away within that Belinda. We love having you as one of our clients in the COD program. So thank you for tuning in and being with us. Yeah, no, I love it. I, and I've now worked out how to actually get posts up on the screen. Mm. So, oh, uh, yeah, I just found it. And look, truth bomb. I love it. <laughs> uh, fist pumps right. coming in from Shirley, right? Yes. Um, but the, the reality is, you know, it's, it's life is there to be lived. Mm. You know, life is there to be lived. And if you don't take the opportunity to live it, someone else will. Don't, don't, okay. don't you be that statistic. That's not living life. Play it for I love that. that. All right. Yeah. I, I, I better go. I better go. <laughs> Christian Lavolsi, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you for giving your insights tonight, as well as your passion and purpose, which we know you play full out and live into. So thank you to everyone who's watched. Please hit the hashtag replay if you're watching this on replay. And thank you for being here with us live. We'll see you next week, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Sydney time for another episode of The Hot Seat. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs> and, uh...